Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's really late, it's like 11 o'clock, and I wasn't going to make a video, you know, I'm just tired, but I've got to ask you guys for something. Stacy's dad has, uh, had, he was the person I was talking about last night in last night's video with the heart stuff going on, and it turns out it's a little worse than what we thought. He's got four blockages. 90% one artery, 80 and another one, and it's the real, I mean, it's bad. He's in a lot of pain. His blood pressure's dropping. They're really worried about him. Uh, healthcare's a joke. Uh, I don't, I just can't imagine. It seems like he could get a surgery pretty quick, and it's like, oh, we'll do it next week. It's really weird, but they're pushing it up. They're pushing up. I mean, it's, it's, everybody around can tell he's not doing good. What I need from you is I need you to lift him up. Okay, his name's Danny, and uh, I just need you to, I need the community. <laughs> now, we're going to talk about what's going on at the border, and it's not, it's not about the Mexicans or Guatemalans or people seeking a better life, okay? I, I, want, I want to get a grip on what exactly is going on. I'm not going to get into the politics. Although, I would like to mention this right now, and I am giving another piece of silver away. Don't forget. I'll give it away in just a second. But I want to highlight, I want you to remember these names. Justice John G. Roberts and Justice Amy Coney Barrett. They're part of the su Supreme Court. There's nine people on the Supreme Court, and there's two. Those two flipped over the spineless, bought and paid for, I don't know. You know what the right thing is, and it's not to open the border wide open so people that hate our guts can come through. I'm talking about Chinese nationals, Russian nationals, uh, uh, Western men, or uh, not Western, sorry, Eastern men are paying forty to $60,000 to send somebody over here by the the coyote, you know, this is a big deal. 10,000 Chinese nationals last year. Uh, it's way more than that now. That's what The important thing is, that's what's coming through the border. People that hate our way of life, they hate our God, they hate everything about us. All they want is to kill us, see us dead, and smuggle a bunch of drugs in. That's, what, that's the problem. John and Amy, you know, that's why we don't want the border wide open. That's why... Uh, the federal government doesn't need to come down here and mess with Texas. You know, they probably need to mind their own business. Like, don't they have enough illegals? Abbott sent enough illegals up there for them to deal with. I'm sure. <laughs> They're all mad about it. What can they say? They're the ones that voted, that, that wants it. So here they are. They show up in a big bus and everybody's all upset. Well, they want Abbott to keep them. I've got some stuff about Rome. I'm sorry, I'm a little scattered. It's time tired, but bear with me. Because Rome can teach us a lot about what we can gather from the information we're getting. How can we discern this information that we're getting? What, what do we do with it? Okay, the border's open. You know, what, what happens? Well, I can, we can only learn from the past. Rome was a republic for 45 years. It's going to be really quick. Don't let me lose you in the boring stuff. It's going to be fast. Before it gradually became an empire, just like the United States. Big empire, right? In the 4th and 5th centuries, the empire began to disintegrate. See, I'm going really fast. Due to numerous military, political, and economic crises. Wow, it's starting to sound familiar. Not to mention plagues. That was a big part of the Roman problem. That was a big problem. In summary... Rome grew from a small settlement into a massive empire, eventually declining due to various internal and external pressures. We're going to talk about the external pressures in the form of immigration. In the early days, immigration was a great thing, just like here. Immigration was good. It still is good. We, there's a, a whole pile of evidence how good immigration is for a country, how bad it is for other countries because of the good people. The people that are really good at stuff come here. So it, it takes the good away and comes here, but not when they're coming in quite like this. 
We're getting to that part. By the third century, pressures from invasions led to increased immigration and other factors like, um, let's say the neighboring country had a piss poor government that was ran by the cartel that made life really hard and their people were poor. They, they didn't have a very good life, so they wanted to come over. That makes sense. You know. Now, let's not mention, or not forget to mention, the competition for jobs. Guys, how much less an hour would an illegal immigrant work for than you or your son or your granddaughter or anybody else their their way of life you know they were probably raised poor i mean they can make a pound of hamburger make stretch out a long ways um and i'm i'm not taking anything from from the uh people i know that have came here from another country that i, I learned a ton from i actually live with seven hindu indians in a two-bedroom apartment <laughs> <laughs> I've got to tell you that story one day, but it was wild. Good people. They'd give me uh, the shirt off their back. I'll do a video about that. It's really good. But uh, the invading forces in this situation was vandals, Lombards, and the problem is it swelled with Germanic migrants. So you had invading forces, and then you had a flood of migrants. So, that wow, it's really starting to sound familiar. This contributed to Rome losing control over its borders and long-term residents moved away. I've been talking about getting your passport. Why not? Somebody put in the comments, why not? Why should I not get a passport? And the first thing that comes to my, my mind is, this is where I live. This is where I'm going to be. You know, I'm an American. I want to stay in America. I get it. I understand. But think about the other people that have thought that through history. See, things are changing. Uh, the United States one day will not be uh, the superpower it is right now. We know that. Superpowers don't stay superpowers forever. They, they go up and they collide and with another one. And it's usually a war involved. I really don't want to talk about wars. There's so much going on. And it looks more like a civil war, considering the 17 countries uh, joining with Texas. And Biden doesn't have a brain. They, who knows? Who's in control? Is Obama running the show over there? <laughs> really? What, is it Michael? What's that dude? <laughs> okay. Now, guys, I hope you got something from that. I just want... It's such a massive, massive problem. And immigration is so broken <clears throat> in the people that come here that are illegal, that I've known through my history, have been good people. And I get it. That's not the point. The point is the people that are coming through the border are the worst of the worst. And let's just say it's 1% of the people. Can you imagine having that many people that want you dead here? You know, we're talking maybe a million. You know, maybe uh, how many is, uh, what is it, 22 million you know, maybe 400,000, 300,000. I figured it up one time. I figured it's like three to 400,000 people here that did not, uh, that was like their life goal was to make sure we didn't have one. You know, but we didn't have a lot. That, that was there. They think they're going to go to heaven or something. It's, it's the stupid. It's the, they've been tricked. You know, Satan's in that business. He tricks people and he lies to them. He's a father of all lies. And they're buying it. They're they're eating it up, hook, line, and sinker, and they believe it, buddy. They they um, they really do, and, and they're coming here wholesale. 
as fast as they can get here. What are we going to do? Well, if it was me, I would probably have a way to uh, ensure security for my family. Uh, and I've been in that for a while. I like to call it my uh, home security uh, 401k, you know, where you can protect your family if something happens. And uh, for 100% certainty, that stuff's going to go up in price in the future. I don't know if Bitcoin's going up or not. I don't know how long the central bankers can hold the precious metals market down and manipulate the stock market and do all their little tricks. But I do know when things get really, really bad, like they did in South Africa not too long ago, and people were sawing trees down the road and trying to block people from coming in, and they were paying $800 for a box of seeds. I mean, it was nuts. All that stuff went nuts. It went straight up. Uh, the seeds that I bought have gone up uh, substantially. I've been making videos about it. So, hey, that's a good way to, that's a, uh, another way. It's another way to protect wealth. Have something everybody wants. It's the ticket. I know, I know people buying cigarettes and uh, all kind of stuff. I don't, I don't really understand that too much. Well, people want to smoke and drink. Well, yeah, but, yeah, I can see alcohol lasting a while, but cigarettes? I don't think they stay good forever. And seems like seeds would be a much better investment. <laughs> Just a thought. Uh, because, you know, it's going up. Oh, and if you want to, I don't make any money off of uh, my buddy Luke. But uh, Luke has been uh, dealing in seeds and dispenser for my whole life. Ever since I've known him. I was a little kid. His family was into it. And he's into it. And he is a massive broker for this stuff. If you want mass... Uh, you know, if you're planting a huge garden and you're trying to save seeds for the future um, and dispensers, check him out. His number's in the description. And he's a good guy. You got my word. I've known him a whole lot. He's one of my best friends. So uh, check Luke out. He'll be in the description. i got to give the silver away. Stand by. The lucky winner will be announced. And it is... Daniel Matura. Daniel Matura. I scrolled up and down. That's one I picked. <laughs> Daniel Matura 6837. All you have to do is text that number. If you want precious metals, Stacy's a broker for Miles Franklin. You can text that number. Um, just get the best price. That's what I aim to do. I want to make my living doing it. It's just a way to hedge wealth, you know? Why not? Okay, and tonight silver will be given away in the next video. I had one more thing I want to share with you. And I wanted to read you this. Um, now, this was the law that Abbott was citing. And it says, The supreme law of the land and, and supersedes any federal statutes to the contrary. The supreme law of the land and supersedes any federal statutes of the contrary. So, uh, and the other one was no state shall enter into an agreement or compact with another state or engage in, in war unless actually invaded. So Abbott's right. He's, in, he's got a green light. He's not doing anything he's not supposed to do. I think he's legitimately trying to protect Texas. Sorry, I kind of kind of got strode out in this video, but um, don't let them fool you. Don't let them lie to you because that's what they want to do. Uh, the people in charge uh, are just not good people, and they don't want the best for us, and neither do the people that are coming in through the border. Not all of them. Don't get me wrong. So, guys, have an awesome, awesome day. I'll see you in the next one later. <coughs>